Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here. I've been watching the comments section very, very closely on the last Culture Shock episode I did, and it's very interesting to find that it really does seem like a 50-50 split. It's kind of hilarious when people say, oh, this is the obvious choice, when statistically, it's not. Like, I don't even know the result of the polls yet, but just reading the comments alone, it's, it's just kind of fascinating. And, you know, I've been watching for days now, having people give their two cents on what they think I should do, so I figured maybe I should throw my own hat in the ring and kind of tell people why I do what I do. Why do I use characters? Why do I not show my face? Why do I do a squeaky voice? And I've talked about this multiple times before, but I guess it's good of me to try and archive everything into one video. So to answer everyone's question of why I do all of this, one answer, protection. And I know that doesn't make any sense right now, but let me explain, because there's a whole lot to this. The first and probably most important thing is protection from extremists. Here's what I mean. MatPat, Ronnie, and Drake all work in objective absolutes. They're dealing with science, they're dealing with matter of fact, very little of what they talk about is subjective. Now that's really hard to offend people with that kind of material. Culture, on the other hand, is gigantically subjective, and it is ever-changing. Perspectives are defended heavily, and those perspectives can change even on a daily basis. And so, when you think about people getting upset uh, for, for cultural or, or even religious reasons, I guess they go hand in hand. You think about the real life people that have done or said something really, really just offensive to a particular culture, but not to any others. And really bad stuff happens to them. However, when it comes to characters, people get mad, but they have no one to be really mad at. You can't be mad at cartoon characters because they don't even really exist. This is why South Park, Family Guy, Cleveland Show, American Dad, this is why they get away with it. Because they're not actual people in front of cameras. If they were, these people could be found. They could be hunted down in a very literal sense. And extremists hurt people. And one of these days, regardless of how much I try, there's going to be a time where I'm going to irritate the wrong person. And when that happens, I don't want my face behind it. I still think it's very, very important what I say and, and what I explain to all of you guys. But because of the nature of what I work with, it's safer for me to be behind a character. All right? So that's the biggest reason is my own peace of mind <laughs> and, and my safety from extremists because there are extremists everywhere. So the next reason is protection from insanity. Now, again, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but here we go. I believe when it comes to YouTube, there are internal and external characters. Doug Walker and James Rolfe versus being the Nostalgia Critic and the AVGN. These are internal characters. Their real-life face is branded to a character. Now, the good side of that is that's very easy to recognize. Average people can discover those people and go up and talk to them and say, Oh, I'm such a huge fan. All that good stuff. But there's kind of a downside to that. And it's a downside that I don't like. In that, there are often times where the interactions of fans are to the character and not the person. So what I mean by that is people going up to Doug Walker and treating him like he is the nostalgia critic. Going up to James Rolfe and believing he is always the AVG and, and interacting with him thusly. I don't want that. I want you guys to interact with me. When I'm at cons and such, I want you to interact with me as me. I don't want you to interact with me as a character. And this is some really deep psychological stuff, but just, just roll with me on that. When I am in my character, I guess kind of like I am now, I don't act any different than my character does. When I write my scripts, I don't really put on a persona. I write as I think, as myself. Now, there are a handful of differences here and there, because I do like to have an established canon for my characters who I love very much, but when it comes to the videos themselves, it's really just me talking. And then that brings up the question of, well, why don't you just sit in front of a camera and talk? Because everyone does that. I wanted to do something more creative than that. I wanted to make something. Granted, there are people out there that are really good at vlogging. Really good at vlogging. I don't think I'm one of those people. Maybe I have interesting stuff to talk about, but it's not what I like. It's not what I want. It's not what I want for my videos. And I understand that there needs to be evolution. There needs to be changes. There needs to be some sort of an attempt to make people happy. And that's fine. And I've done that, believe that or not. But I enjoy being an external character. I enjoy having a different exterior. I like being a character exteriorly. I love that so many people love my characters because I love them too. 
And that's kind of what I want. I want my face to be associated with a person, not a character. So that's, again, one of the reasons why I do what I do, especially with the squeaky voice. The next thing, protection of my money and time. And this is more of a general character thing, but it still goes hand in hand with the voice. I don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on lighting, camera, green screens, etc. And I'm not bound by space and time. I can give any narration with any effect, anything that I want in any way that I want. Working through characters and their voices gives me the ability to do anything and everything that I want to do in the narration, in the information, and in the video. And it takes less time. That's the other beautiful, beautiful thing is that the process that I have in my videos, I have down to such a science that they can be done relatively quickly. Videos where it's in real life for me, even if I'm just vlogging, it takes up so much more time. I have to do take after take after take. And that's because that's just not the format that I personally enjoy doing. It's one of the reasons that I got out of drama when I did. So anyway, lastly, protection of what I love. I love my characters. I love who they are, I love what they sound like, and I love what they do. This is my vision. And I've made huge, huge strides to try and fix what needs fixed. Do you guys remember when I first started out? Do you remember how bad my voice was then when it was more robotic than anything? I listened to you guys. I changed it. I made it better. And and even now, I'm working with DJ Cutman to do compression, de-essing, de-sounding, all this stuff to try and make the experience better without having to sacrifice my own vision of what I want to do with my own videos. And I love making videos because I can bring to life what I envision, what I see in my head. And taking away an aspect of my character that I personally dearly love does not make me want to continue to do this. It does not make me want to continue to make videos. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing. I want to do what I am thinking of, what I am envisioning, and, and create that. That's being an artist and a creator. I, I love you guys, but I can't make all of you happy. And that's something that everyone should, every human being should know, is that you can't make everyone happy. And I will be damned if I become a slave to numbers, a slave to popular opinions, and, and optimization. These things are important, don't get me wrong. And I make changes. Like I said, you guys should have, you guys should see my earliest videos and how terrible they are in comparison to what they are now. But I want to do what I love, and I don't want to compensate my happiness in my work to make as many people happy as I can without completely selling out my vision. It's a hard balance. It's an incredibly hard balance to keep what you love, but also optimizing it to perform well. But I never want to stop doing what I love to do. I want to always be able to make videos the way that I see them, because it gives me such great joy. And the fact that I can make a living off this is absolutely stellar. You guys have no idea. If it wasn't for this, I don't know what I would be doing. I would probably be miserable at a desk job, wanting to just die. And it's because of my ability that, that I can do what I want, that I can vision what I want. I can listen to you guys. I can make changes. But I'm not told I have to do anything. It's so crucial for me. So there's still so much more for me to ponder. I mean, I, there's, there's a lot of things to take in consideration. There's, there's a lot of things that I really have to think about. But at the end of the day, this is going to be my decision. And mine alone. It's my show. I greatly, greatly value everyone's input. And I'm going to be looking at those numbers very, very hard. But this is my candid perspective of my own work. And I think it was about time that I share it with you guys. I want you guys to discover and see what I see in my own work and why I love to do this work. So, anyway, thanks for listening, guys. I hope to see the poll numbers relatively soon. But until that time, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.